Good morning, Greater Holy Trinity Church of God in Christ, family and friends. What a blessing it is to have you here with us this Sunday. Now, we're asking that you praise the Lord with us this Sunday. Come on and lift your hands, sing a song, and feel the presence of the Lord in your spirit in your home. Praise with your families. Get on Zoom and praise with your friends. Just make sure you're giving it all up to God on this Sunday. We'll see you later on in the service. Come on, clap your hands. How many of you know God is everything? He's the author and minister of the faith. He is the father and the father. He's the spirit and the spirit land. He'll give his strength to finish the race. service today. The music team is doing an excellent job and soon but very soon we're going to receive the word from the Lord on today. Now this is a part where everybody can play a part of the service and that is in the ministry in giving. How many of you know that you can add blessings to your life when you sow onto good ground? I want to take you for a moment into the book of Malachi in the third chapter and beginning at the sixth verse it says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? And he continues to say, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. But then it says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Ah, but then this part is important too. I, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit. Before the time of the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And I really like this part, my reader. And all nations 
shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. See, God has a blessing plan set inside for us right now. That if we would sow our first tenth, the first increase of our pay, the first increase of our yield, back into the storehouse, back into the storehouse of the Lord, He would then open up windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we don't even have room enough to receive. Amen. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty good to me on this morning. So, for all of you who would like to take advantage of God's great blessing plan, you can sow into this good ground on Givelify.com. That's Givelify.com by searching Greater Holy Trinity, Church of God in Christ. Or if you're saying, I don't do all that technology stuff, Elder Clarence, I'm old school. Then you can send your money, your check, at 980 Rhodes Avenue, Akron, Ohio, area zip code 44307. That's 980 Rhodes Avenue, Akron, Ohio, 44. Amen. God bless you and welcome in, family. Welcome in wherever you are watching us. Youngstown, Akron, the nation, might I even say all over the world, there is a word from the Lord for you. Man, it's so good to see you. I pray you all enjoy Thanksgiving holiday. Hope you didn't eat too much. I truly want to say thank you, family. Because of all of you who gave on last week, watch this, get ready to shout. We were able to bless over 250 families in northeastern Ohio with groceries for Thanksgiving. Man, that's a place to give God praise. Man, if you gave anything last week, thank you. We exist to share the light, the love, and the gospel of Jesus Christ. It felt so good going into the neighborhoods, and you all helped us bless so many people on last week. Those of you in Akron, in Youngstown, who work together as a team, as a body of Christ, to serve the community, I say thank you. If you're one of the ones who was served and you're watching today, welcome home. That's what it's all about, being the legs, the feet, and the hands of Jesus Christ, spreading the good news. People don't care how much they know till they know how much you care. I, I, want, I want you to watch this. You'll see in just a minute. Uh, uh, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Watch this, everybody. What's up, family? It's not even two o'clock yet, and people have lined up here at East High School, um, the Light Church. We exist to share the light, the love, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as you can see, so many of us have come to bless these families for Thanksgiving. I want to thank everybody who's helping us make this happen. Somebody's going to have something to eat on Thanksgiving because of your tithe, your giving. Light Church, I love you. Um, we're, we're, doors are closed, as you can see, but the church is wide open. We exist to be the legs, the feet, the arms. Christ. I want to thank all of them. Y'all wave at the people. Everybody wave. They are helping us make it happen, everybody. This is amazing. This is what we do. Two cities that we're doing this in today. It's amazing. Not just Youngstown. So many people came to help us in Akron, Ohio. So many cars came. We just stopped in the middle of the road and flagged down people who might need something for Thanksgiving. Hey, if they don't come to you, Go to them. This is right around the corner from our church. Why not get into the neighborhood? Let them know that they're loved. That there's a church here that wants to share the love, the light, the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Man, if your neighborhood doesn't know you're here, maybe you shouldn't be here. Let's do our best to serve our community. Love on people. Make sure people have what they need. We decided to go even further. We went to the towers. And we just went into people's apartment complexes. Asked them if they had food for Thanksgiving. Look at these fleet of cars and the truck. It just came out. And if it wasn't for you giving, we would not have been able to do this. So many people came and the truck was just loaded with groceries. And we got everyone's information because we want to stay connected with them. We're going to be sending them information about when church is starting. I'm telling you, there's a vision. I need you guys to go with it. We're going to touch 
our city and our community. Thank you, look at all these individuals. We saw some great men out there. I had the privilege and pleasure of touching these men. So many helpers came. Red, yellow, black, white people came from everywhere. That's what the church is. We're kingdom. I need you guys to go with me. Let's do this. Let's make it happen for Jesus. Someone has truthfully said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. We gotta let the world know that we care about them, we love them. Man, look at this. It was so beautiful to see young people and seasoned people working together for one common purpose. Who could miss a smile like this? This is what it's all about. We're here in Akron, Ohio. The Light Church is uh, here to share the light, the love, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, Greater Holy Trinity family, those of you who are just now figuring out what we're trying to do, we are really trying to impact the community. I want to thank those of you who are coming alongside me and, and believe in our leadership. We're already starting. We're not, we're not, we're not waiting. We're going to bless our community. We need you to give. We need your attendance. We need you to come and be a part. There might be many of you who say, no, this is not for you. But if you want to help do community service and serve our community and win souls for Christ, man, look at how many people. Look, these people, they need food. They need, they need love. They need to know about Christ. That's what it's all about. And so many people have come to help us. That's what we're going to do. I hope you'll come alongside us. All information at thelightchurch.us where you can find out everything that's going on for one church, two cities. I love you guys. Wow, was that amazing or what? I told you the vision and you guys ran with it. You responded and God be glorified. God is so faithful. He is so good. Perhaps you don't live in northeastern Ohio, uh, but you sold a seed into our church. Anything you gave, I want you to know that you are a part of this. You are counted in this blessing. May God bless you just as he is blessing us because of you sowing seed into good ground. We raised, man, try not to shout everybody, over $5,000 to bless 250 families in one weekend. When you sow into our church, believe me, trust me, you are sowing into the kingdom of God. You are sowing into good ground and I'm expecting a harvest in your life. I'm expecting overflow to hit your life. Don't look at me like that. Anybody watching me today expecting God to move miraculously in your life and in your finances, in your family, I just want you to type me in the chat. I want to see wherever you're, you are. Type your name in and just say, just say me. It's harvest time for somebody. That said, what a perfect segue into our time of giving. Those of you who feel so compelled to sow a seed into our ministry, man, we're moving. And to those of you who are systematic givers and tithers to our ministry, this is your opportunity to honor God in giving him the first of your increase. I believe in giving God the top ten. When you give him the top ten, look at me, just take my word for it. He blesses the rest. The tithe is a tenth of all you take in. If you're new to our church family, welcome in. We believe in honoring God with whatever hits our hand, we give him a tenth of it and say, God bless the rest. Thank you for what you've given me. We know everything. All seed comes from him. We give him the top ten and say, God, breathe on the rest. And I'm praying that there's tithers watching me right now. The tithe helps us to ensure that everything is taken care of at our church. It's what we believe is almost the kingdom tax, if you will. Man, you pay your taxes, pay your tithe. That, really, you're not paying, you're returning the tithe because a tithe is not a gift, it's a return. Uh, that people who are in need receive assistance. We want to make sure that, that those who are employees of the church are compensated, that our bills are paid. We can only do this when you respond and give God what you owe them, return, sow into the ministry. Those of you who want to give a gift, an offering, you can do that as well. If you are a part of our GHT family, what's up, GHT? 
Man, in Akron, Ohio, which is now a part of our light family, you can give here. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. Come on, give Levi. Everybody, just take a picture of that link right now. Get it, get it. And somebody sow a seed today. Our Akron church, man, it, we, need, we need you. I can't do it without you. Everybody right now, let's be systematic in our tithing and our giving. Everyone else, those watching online, those watching from, from our young sound campus. Wow, it feels weird saying that. And light nation all over the world, those of you who are watching from whatever state, whatever country, feel free to give here. But let's all give something. Give something so that we can make sure that, that nothing drops. We want to do our best to be a blessing to families all around the Mahoning Valley in Summit County. So we need your support. Certainly you can see that this is good ground. You see what we're doing. We don't have to hide it. God is doing wonderful things in our church, and we're believing what's on our church is getting ready to hit your life. If you are a part of our church family and you are in need of support, don't you hesitate. Simply email us, info at delightchurch.us, and we will see to it that we do our best to assist you. Because of the loving, giving members of our church who so faithfully share of their resources and give tithes and offering, it enables us to bless those who are in need, bless those who do not have. There are so many ways you can give at our church, man. You can text to give, give on our website, thelightchurch.us, give via cash app, the number sign, the money sign, and the light church OH. It's just all right there. Or just mail it to P.O. Box 567, Youngstown, Ohio, 44501. Hey, brothers, I enjoyed meeting with y'all on last week. I want every man to tithe. Come on, right now, every man give something. Tithe. Give God your best. Every woman, every teenager watching me, you got a job, give God the tenth. And believe he's going to work in your behalf. Those giving at our Akron Church, remember, please, let me reiterate, Use our Givelify link. It's right there on the screen. Again, if you were not able to get in on blessing those families last week, it's not too late to give your $100 seed. We want to make sure we always have something in the storehouse. I want to pray over your gifts right now. Come on, everybody, just stretch your hands to me. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for every tither. I thank you for every giver. I pray that you will sustain them even in this time, Lord God. I declare and decree they will not go into a recession, but it will be a reset for them. I pray in Jesus' name that you will put your super on their natural. Do something amazing, God, in Jesus' name. I pray, man. All right, everybody, go ahead, give those tithes and offerings. The praise team is coming right back, and I'll be back in just a minute with a powerful word. Watch this.
team praise God let's jump into this word as we conclude this series the sixth contribution to Lord of the harvest come on grab your Bibles and and we're going to begin a new series next we can call help for the holidays I hope you've enjoyed this teaching the gospel everybody grab your Bible come on let's get this word the gospel according to St. Luke's account according to St. Luke's the gospel of St. Luke, chapter 10. And let's begin verse 2. Just one scripture. Everybody look at it. Everybody look at it. It says, he told them the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest field. For the next fleeting moments, I want to speak to you about what to do with just a few. Before I jump into help for the holidays, I want to preach from the subject, help for the harvest. Help for the harvest. Let me talk to you just for a minute because I must admit to you that I'm a part of a generation that grew up in church. And I don't know who remembers this, but I had to go to noonday prayer. Come on, type a one in the chat if you remember noonday prayer. Tuesdays and Fridays. I'm not sure exactly what day it was on. Uh, who remembers Sunday school? Y'all, Sunday school is marching on. You remember the van, Sunday school van. And it would drive through the neighborhood, follow me to Sunday school early on Sunday morning. Come on, Sunday school 101. How many, how many of you graduated from Sunday school 101? And, and that was, man, that was the best school they told me. And church Sunday morning right after. And then, of course, 
6 p.m., we had this thing called YPWW, or Young People Willing Workers. And 7.30 p.m. was evening service. Y'all know every Sunday, every church has Sunday night service and, and Tuesday night Bible study or Bible band. No, that's not a musical group. That was, that was a group that got together and they studied the Bible. And Wednesday night was choir rehearsal and Friday night was pastoral teaching. And, and don't let there be a revival. Oh, my Lord, don't let there be a revival. We sometimes be there every day. Come on, five-night revivals, three-night revivals, man, one-month revival. Who know what I'm talking about? And we had to be there every night. We were there all night. It, it would get sometimes, we were there about 2 a.m. in the morning. I'm not exaggerating. In the morning, who remembers those stay-all-night services? You had to bring your pillow and your blanket to the church. And we would just be up there tarrying for the Holy Ghost. Y'all remember it. Well, come on, we was tarrying Friday night, Terry service. Who remember Friday night, Terry service? You had to, to, to pray. You said Jesus so many times. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm not going there. Y'all don't remember that. Come on, look at me. Believe it or not, I grew up in the day where kids didn't tell their parents what they would and what they would not do. You didn't ask your child whether or not they felt like going to church. Your butt was going to church. Look at me, Pookie. Get your butt out the bed. Get dressed. Your butt was going to church whether you wanted to or not. The older I got, church became a routine. I, I saw it. I saw my dad. I saw my mom. They, they raised me that way. They told me I had to wear certain things when I went there. I, I found myself going to church because that's what, that's what I was taught to do. That's all I knew to do. We didn't have the air conditioning in our church that we have now. No, we use funeral fans. Who remembers that? Come on, those funeral fans was the bomb. L.E. Blacks, shout out to L.E. Blacks. You know, we had the funeral fans. We had Sorting Calhoun and Akron. Y'all know what I'm talking about, funeral fans. There was no state-of-the-art sound system. You, everybody had maybe two microphones. Everybody sang through the same one. There was no flashing lights. There was no praise theme. Who was the praise team? The praise team, y'all laughing. The praise team was anybody who stood up to sing during testimony service. Oh, y'all so old, y'all don't remember testimony service. Don't act like you don't remember people could pop up whenever they wanted to and sing whatever came to their mind, even if they just wrote it on the spot. They just get up. And, and I was a musician, so I knew I had to play whatever they came. I didn't know what key they was going to sing in. Some people who couldn't sing tried to sing, and we just winning. They singing in eight sharp, and we just trying to go with him. Don't act like y'all don't remember testimony service when people would get up and say, give an honor to God who is the, come on and type it in there. Type it in there. Who is the, I want to see who gets it first. Give an honor to God who is the, come on, fill it in. Go ahead and type it. I'm looking at you online. Give an honor to God who is the what? I'll give you a second to type it. See there? Y'all know it. You, who is the head of my life? Y'all do know what I'm talking about. That's right. Give an honor to God who is the head of my life to the pastors, saints, and Type it in. Type it in. I'm looking at you. Type it in. There, there, there you go. To the pastor, saints, and friends. I thank God for having my life, health, and, okay, did you type it in there? I'm looking at you. Fill it in. Strength. That's right. Somebody didn't spell strength right. Fix it. Fix it. I, I'm just glad to be saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and Come on, type it in. I want to see who grew up in church. That's right, fire baptized. I got Jesus on my side, and I'm running for my, yeah, for my life. There it is. I just want y'all to pray my strength. Come on, type it in. There it is. Pray my strength in the Lord. As I go on to see what the end, come on, type it in there. Is going to be, exactly. Church was routine. It was in your mind. You knew what phrases to say. We knew what to wear. We knew how to shout, how to dance, how to clap. We knew we were going to church. We could mock everybody's church. We knew how we, we could mock everybody's shout. We knew how this person preached and how this person sang, and we would laugh about it. We would giggle about it. I developed a love for church. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I still love it. But then I messed around and fell in love with God. Oh, my God. Who remembers the day when God first saved you, when he first changed your life, when I'm talking about he truly came into your heart and you started putting stuff down and the stuff that you used to do, you didn't do as much. Who remembers the days where you looked forward to going to church, not because you wanted to be entertained, not because the choir was going to sing your favorite song, not because the pastor wasn't going to hoop or, no, no, baby, when, when you went to church, 
You came in expecting a move of God. You wanted to feel the power of God. You wanted to be refreshed. Uh, Church was sometimes our only place to vent. Church was our only place to get our breakthrough. Church was the only time you felt like you were something, especially in the traditional black church. That was the only time. Why did we put on suits? Why did we put? Because we were made to feel like we were nothing. Church was the only place where we could walk around and actually be something. Some of us got so attached to our titles because we wasn't nowhere outside of church. Church was everything. So uh, we, we wanted to be pastor this or elder this or deacon this or minister this or missionary this or trustee this. We needed that title to affirm who we were because without our title, we felt like we weren't anything. We only sung songs that we believed, watch this, would move God. We didn't just sing anything in our church. No, we wasn't singing just because it was a good beat or just because it was the, the, the latest song that came out on the radio. We wore clothes that we thought we could praise God in and we wouldn't bust out of while we were shouting and dancing. Come on and look at me. We brought our friends and our neighbors and our co-workers to church because we wanted God to meet them there. We wanted to see them change. We just knew if we could just get, get, get our cousin to church, if we can just get our brother, our friend to church, we could get them into the sanctuary. God was going to do something amazing in their life. God was going to be there and God God would deal with their situation. I must admit to you that I'm a part of the generation that loves this new praise and worship. Oh, my God. Did did you enjoy the worship team today? I I, I love it. I, I, I love the new praise and worship dispensation, as it were. I love the lights. I'm just being honest with you. I love it. I love the videos. The first time I seen that, when I, when I went to the Word Church, I saw the, the lights, I saw the video. I love it. I do. I love it. I, I love the air conditioning. It feels comfortable. I don't need no more funeral fans. Uh, I love the graphic designs uh, on the video. I love what's going on in the flashing stuff behind on, on the screens. I love the cordless microphones. I love it. But I must admit, we must be careful because we have drifted over into commercialism a little bit, where we are more concerned. Be careful that we're, we're not more concerned with sensuality of church at the expense of the quality of the spirituality in the church. I, I love the lights, but do we have the light? I love the praise team, but are we trying to entertain you, or do we want to invoke the presence of God? When did church become more about bringing you and less about worshiping him. When, when did church become more about making sure that you're, you're good? And we got to be careful because sometimes we come to church and we want to sing the song that we like. We want the praise team to sing the song that we like. But if it doesn't touch the heart of God, why do we sing it? Have we lost our mission? Have we forgotten our purpose? Look at me, church. Wake up, Zion. I have a message. We are sleeping in the daylight. But the sun is going down. God told me to tell you, church, all over the world, I don't know who's watching, it's harvest time. And the Lord of the harvest wants us to go out into his field and get to work. We need help for the harvest. Look at me. You're getting ready to see an influx of people come to Christ. Get ready. We need help. For the harvest. The Bible says in Luke chapter 10, verse 2, NIV, are you listening to me? He told them, the harvest is plentiful. I won't hold you long, but the workers are few. Then he says, ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. The first observation, those of you who are taking notes, thank you for being a teaching church. I don't just want to shout and dance you all the time. I want you to get the word. The first observation, if you're watching, I want, I want to highlight. Hey, what's up? Number one, I see the problem. The problem is evident. It's, it's, not, it's not with the harvest. There's plenty of people. The problem is that there are not enough people who want to work for it. Let me say it again. It, it is not the, that there's a lack of people. There's plenty of people. The the harvest is plenteous. But the problem is that there are not enough people 
who are willing to work for it. I'm so sick of bad theology. Bad theology has taught us that we can name it and claim it. Throw a dollar and holler. Everything is just going to come to you. Easy. That's, that's not Bible. It, it, it's not. I mean, you can say it. You can try to stretch it and make it your eisegesis or whatever. But let, let me give you some Bible. Stop expecting a harvest if you're not willing to work for it. We have been programmed to believe that harvest time is a time where you can just kick back and chill. And everything you have planted will just come to you. I'm sorry to bust your bubble. Look at me. But that's not true. I, 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 know, I, I know when I told you it's harvest time that many of y'all went to shout. <laughs> it's harvest time. Ah, it's harvest time. You went to shouting and dancing, didn't you? And many of you jumped up and started praising. Amen. I'm ready to receive. Pastor, I'm ready to receive my harvest. Amen. I'm ready to receive it. I'm ready to receive it. Hands up, open wide, and, and you ready, and you shouting, you dancing, smiling on your face, you doing all that. Baby, harvest time is not a time to dance. Harvest time is not a time where you can kick back and chill in your lazy boy and rest. I don't know where, where, what you thought harvest time was. I, I don't know where we get that. Harvest time is far from easy. In fact, I'd argue that harvest time is one of the hardest seasons in your life. Harvest time, come on, who's from the country? Let me talk to a, 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 a farmer. Let me hook you up with a, a, with a farmer and tell them it's harvest time and see if they get excited and shout, shouting and dancing. Yes, they're excited at the fact that the harvest is plenteous, but now that, that bespeaks the fact that there's work that has to be done. And so many people want the harvest but they are unwilling to work. Harvest time is the time where you have to put your, you got to push and roll your sleeves back. You got to tie your hair, tie your hair up and, and you got to go get it. Look at me. To all my entrepreneurs, let me share with you. I believe it's harvest time for you. Harvest time is the time where you have to work extended hours. Harvest time is the time where you have to stay up later than usual. Harvest time is a time where you got to be in the gym a little bit more than usual. Harvest time is a space in time where you have to make it happen. It doesn't just happen by itself. You have to do extra duties. You, you have to spend more time with your children doing homework. You, you have to write the business plan. You, you have to fight to finish the book, to finish the degree. You have to date intentionally. You have to cut people off who are unproductive and not a part of your destiny. Though, though the harvest has come, it still requires work. It has to be picked. You got you, you to gotta get out there and work it. You got to work the ground. You, you got to go. You got you to work it. You don't have time in this season to play around. This is your time to get stuff done. This is your time to make money. This is your time to kill debt. This is your time to get Christ in your life. This is your time for your marriage to come together. This is your time for your finances to get straight. You don't have time to be spending everything on, 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 on Black Friday. I hope many of you still got a little money in the bank. I, I was just assigned to GHTC. In Akron, what's up? Another holler at my Akron church. And everybody wanted me to be excited. Ah, you got another church. As I am, yes. But more than anything, I thought to myself, it's harvest time. It's not time. Look at me, those of you in Akron. It's not time to sit back and relax and enjoy having built a big church. It's time to get out into his field and go and get harvest. Somebody who has a business needs to know that it's harvest time. Look at me. I know I'm talking right to you. This is your time to reorganize. Type a five in the chat if I'm talking to you. This is your time to strategize. This is the time for you to go back to the drawing board. This is your time to reset. This is your time to rebuild. This is your time to reestablish. This is your time to reanalyze. You got this big idea that God put in your heart. Look at me. Hey, you, you, you're a young person. You're a young entrepreneur. This is your time to shake it up. This is your time to make it happen. I know 
People said you wasn't going to be nothing. People said you wasn't going to do nothing. This is your time to prove them wrong. This is your time to say, God, whatever you put inside of me is getting ready to come out of me. This is your time to make it happen, baby. Take some of my faith if you don't got none of yours. This is your time to shake things up. It's harvest time for you. Well, Pastor, why me? Not because of all the information in your head, but rather what's in your heart. God picked you because of what's in your heart. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers, not everybody wants to work. Pastor Mark, why do you think they, they gave it to you? I, I, I think it might be because God knows I'm ready to work. Go, God knows I'm ready. I'm, I don't want traditionalism. I honor traditionalism. I'm going to build on what the Father's planted, but this is the time where you have to respond to what's going on in this day, in this time, in this season. The harvest is there waiting for you, but the problem is you can't get the harvest without the right workers. You can't get the harvest without the right team. Man, anybody tell you. Robinette is my chief of staff here at the church, and she will tell you how, how much I, I think team is important. Man, my pastor, Dr. R.A. Vernon, it was a team at the Word. It was, it was a team. He taught me the concept of teamwork. Teamwork makes your dream work. If you got the wrong people, you'll never get to the right places kicking it with wrong people. The problem is we have a big harvest but a small amount of workers. I would talk to, to the chief of staff and I would tell her, I said, hey, I want to get this done. I want to do this. I, I feel like I want to do this. And they knew I came in. I, I was doing something every week and I wanted to do something. They said, hey, pastor, slow down. I said, what's going on? Pastor, slow down. P pastor, slow down. Because you're wearing out your, your main workers. It's just two or three people that's doing everything. That's why it's happening. But we got, we got a huge church, 200, 300, 400 people. But it's hard to get 20 people together to work. God is saying in this season, it's harvest time. Look at me. He's going to use people that, ready, that really want to work. Notice he points out that the workers are few. I don't know how many people were there. I, I'm not sure. He, he doesn't say there were few people. He says the workers are few, which means you could be a, amongst a lot of people, but only a few people have the capacity and the willingness to work. Look at me, GHTC family, TLC, what's up? I want to know which of y'all are ready to work. Or do you have to have a title to work? Or do we have to say your name to work? Or does it have to go to your way to work? Or are you going to be concerned about, hey, I got souls I want to win. We want to see this church filled up with souls. We want to see this school packed with souls. There's somebody that's going to die and go to hell if we don't talk to them. Hey, all over the nation, look at me. Quit, quit, quit competing with churches. Who cares? Man, I, I'm so glad, oh, I'm so glad there's churches starting here and churches starting there. The harvest is right. The harvest is plenteous, but we need more people to go out and get him. But he shares with us, out of all the people that were there, only a few people wanted to work. I need you. Look at me, family. I need your help. We need help for the harvest that's coming. It's here. It's a trip. When you have so much vision and it's aborted by lack. You got so much vision, but you can't get it because there are people who are not tithing and not trusting God, not believing God. And we're holding up the time. You can have a big church. You can have a big vision. You can have a big business. But not everybody around you wants to work with you. So many people want to do their own thing. I got to do my own thing. Sometimes it's better to be the best number two. You're going to have to identify who are your go-getters? Look at me. I'm not just talking about our church. Let me talk about your business. Let me talk about your family. Let me talk about your team. You're going to have to identify who is in your circle that needs to stay there. Who, who are your go-getters? Who you know got your back? Who, who is your squad? Every Mary needs an Elizabeth. Who is the person that makes your baby leap? Who are you, your, your workers in this season? Who can make it happen for you? Who are your Peters? Who, who will cut an ear off for you? Who are your workers in this season? Who wants to kill it with you? Who is your team? Who wants to do the work? Who can do the work even if their name is not lifted up? Who will stay up late at night to make sure it's excellent? But then I see, then I see number two, watch this, watch this. 
I see the problem, number one. But number, number two, I see the prayer. The writer gives us the prayer to pray. He says, thank you for watching. Plead with or pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. He says, what you do when you have a problem of a lack of workers is pray that God sends workers. That's my prayer. God, we don't just need people who can sing. God, we just don't need people who have a title. God, we need some people who are willing to work. We don't just need people who would tithe and give, and that's good. We need you. God, we don't just need people who would teach and preach, and we need you. But we need people who are equipped and ready to go out into the field and work. We need people who want to see these schools better. We need people who want to see these communities better. We, we need people who want to see people who had drugs and they were addicted to this and addicted to that come to the altar and lay it down. We, we want to see people change. We need people who want to see revival. We need people who are concerned that people are dying and going to hell without Jesus. We need people who want to see the harvest come. Some people enjoy seeing the harvest come in and eating the harvest. But somebody has to get out there and do the work of harvesting. Man, y'all wasn't there. I don't know if you saw it. I showed it to you a little bit. I want to praise God this week for the few. I want to tell you what you can do with a few. We fed 250 families this weekend. I want to thank God for the few workers that gathered at the church amidst this pandemic to bring in the harvest. I want to thank God for the men that stood by my side and the women who were with me through the night and the teens and even the children who, who rolled up their sleeves. I see y'all should have seen it. Ava. Y'all should have seen she was She was just coming and she was putting rice here. You need another rice? She was just throwing me rice, throwing me rice. And I, 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 she helped us to feed 250 families. I want to praise God for the ones who donated $100 above their tithes and offerings to help us win souls, to ensure that somebody have food to eat for Thanksgiving. People don't care, let me say it again, how much you know until they know how much you care. Ministry takes money, everybody. And the more money you have, the more ministry you can do. This is the time where, like never before, I'm looking for individuals who are ready to work for the Lord's harvest. This is his field. Notice it says his harvest. It's not just about you. I, I made it about you. Yeah, you can pull a principle out of this text that suggests there is a harvest coming for you. But this particular harvest that he's speaking of in this text is the harvest of the world. The harvest which is white and which is ripe, Revelation tells us. It's, it's a harvest that is ripe. And, and, and pray the Lord of the harvest that he would send workers into the harvest. And I know it's that because preceding that, next thing you know is we see him sending them out by twos. I know I talked about your harvest. There is a principle in this text that we gain. And when we can use it in our business, we can use it personally, social arenas. But the overarching theme of this particular text is that there is a harvest of souls that are ripe for the picking. Hey, maybe you don't know Jesus Christ and you're watching me right now. Can I suggest to you, you might be part of the harvest. There is not a, not a shortage of souls. We need to let people know that there's room at the cross that Jesus died for them, that he, he took nails to his hands for them. God wants you to come to him. One of my dear brothers was just gifted a beautiful church. And someone asked how I felt about that. I said, I'm so excited. There's another church concerned about getting souls saved. The problem is not that there is a lack of souls. I don't care if they go to that church or this one. I don't, as long as their soul is saved. You don't understand. When you consider the harvest, if you fail to get the harvest in in time, the harvest can be lost. The harvest can go to waste. You leave the harvest open to insects and animals. This is just what we're doing when we fail to witness. When we fail to tell somebody, God changed my life. When we fail to get out there and roll our sleeves up and get out there and tell somebody that Jesus saves. When we 
fail to worship, when we fail to pray, when we fail to tithe, when we leave the harvest open for attack, if you don't work during the harvest time, you risk losing the harvest. I got to talk to somebody uh, who's tired and let us not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, you will reap if you don't give up. And I, I know many of you are tired. Many of you are tired of this pandemic. Many are, of you are tired. Many of you might be watching me. You have COVID-19. When is this going to end? And I don't know about you, but I cannot afford to lose another harvest. There is no time to waste. Let me prophesy to you that what's on your church is coming on your life. The harvest is ripe. God is blessing the church. Man, God is sustaining your church, but you've got to go get it. The business is going to blow up, but you've got to build it from the ground up. Yes, you're going to get married. Don't worry. You'll be married, but you've got to get in that gym, work out. And get out that refrigerator. Somebody just got mad. See? See? You just got mad. I'm just telling you the truth. You got to get that hair together. Come on. You got to brush those teeth, brother. Come on. Yes, your kids are, are going to do well being homeschooled. But it's only because you take the time to sit with them and develop them and help them through it. This is new to them. Come on. Make sure that their learning area is nice. Make sure they're not in their bed going to school. Yes, your marriage is going to get better, but it's only because you're willing to go to counseling and seek the help that you, you know you drastically need. you got to do the hard work. Number one, we see the problem. Number two, we see the prayer. But lastly, number three, we see the provision. Because verse 3 says, go, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag, or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. Oh, you just missed your time to shout. Let me back that thing up and say that scripture again. He says, number four, verse four, do not take a purse, or a bag, or sandals. Leave your money at home, and do not greet anyone on the road. Just go there. Say focus. The writer has the nerve to say, I'm sending you into the harvest and don't take a purse. Don't take a bag or sandals. Okay, tighten up your weave right now. Come on, tighten it on your track. Tight, get your wig together right now. Get, your, get, get, get everything together. Get, those of you brothers looking at me, come on. Get that, get that, thing, get that thing tight on you. Because where I've, se- I've, seen, I've seen something in this text. I don't know if you've seen it. He says, where I'm sending you, I'm sending you into a harvest. I'm sending you into a house. I'm sending you into a place. And when you get there, your provision is going to be there for you. What I have for you is already going to be there. Somebody shout, I receive it. When you get to the place, don't have to worry about it. It's already provided. I truly believe this is the time that God is going to send you to a place. It's on God. When he sends you to a place, it's on God to provide for you there. No time to worry right now. He even has the nerve to tell them, you better take a, don't take your purse, don't take your bag, don't take your sandals. God's saying, I got you. I need to talk to somebody. Let me preach to somebody who's worried about where your next is coming from. And I need to tell you, God has already provided. Somebody needs to give God 30 seconds of praise right there. God has already made a way out of no way. He said, I will make a way where there is no way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. When we don't, we can't find a way, God becomes our way. He is the place of provision. Jehovah Jireh, Genesis chapter chapter 22 says there is the place of provision. He has made a place, and I don't know who's looking at me right now, but God can make a place of provision right in your house. Some of y'all have not even been to your job. You've been going to your job from your house. He made your house a place of provision. You need to give God 30 seconds A hallelujah. God, thank you. I adore you, God. I praise you because I don't know how you're going to do it. Somebody's sick in their body. I need to let you know that he's still Jehovah Rapha, somebody who is worried about what's coming against you and the enemy coming against you, I need to remind you that he is Jehovah Nisi. He is our banner. He is Jehovah Gabor. He will fight for you. When you get to the place, it is the responsibility of the people in the house to provide for you. You bring the word. You bring the vision. You bring the goals. You bring the kingdom but they will sustain you in that place. And he tells them, if they don't, 
then get your shoes up, shake your, your shoes up and, and get to stepping and take your peace with you. Oh, my God, somebody missed that. Somebody in a relationship right now, you're thinking about uh, that person thinking about leaving you. When they, when they decide they want to leave you, I want you to pick up your peace and take it with you. Tell them, no, I'm, I, I'm out. Me and my peace is gone. Me and my joy is gone. Me and my money is gone. Me and my favor is gone. If, if me and my, I'm taking everything with me. I believe God is telling us, church, that when we get to work and go get the harvest, the provision will come with it. The provision will manifest for us. Watch God work for you when you start working for him. I'm not talking to everybody, but I'm talking for somebody who believes God's getting ready to work something out in your life. God's getting ready to work something out in your marriage. God's getting ready to work something out in your business. God's getting ready to work something out in your mind. God's getting ready to manifest some vision that's been waiting for you while you're working for the Lord of the harvest. You're getting ready to see a harvest yourself. Somebody get ready. Get your bags packed. Get ready for God to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. I'm getting excited all by myself. If you believe it, type a three in the chat and say he preaching to me. My assignment is to preach Jesus Christ. And him crucified. My assignment is to make sure that every soul hears the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he died so that you can live again, so that, that you can start again, that you might have forgiveness, that you might have a way to the tree of life. My assignment is to tell every sinner you can be justified. You can be saved. You can be forgiven. You don't have to walk in darkness. You can experience life. In the light, my assignment is to assure you that the harvest has come. The light has come. Jesus is ready to rescue you. He's ready to receive you. Jesus is ready to redeem you. He's ready to buy you back. Jesus is ready to change your life. And if you are watching me today and you know you're a part of that harvest, you might be the very harvest that God is calling in. I'm coming to get you today. You're just right for the picking. God is calling you home. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe I'm a part of the harvest. I need you in my life. I believe Jesus Christ is Lord. I confess he's Lord. I believe that you sent Jesus to die for my sins. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner. I want to be saved. I'm tired of, of these addictions. I'm tired of this way of life. I want, I want to walk in the light. I want to live in the light. Create in me a clean heart. Renew your right spirit within me. I want to be saved, Lord. I thank you now for saving me. Thank you for justifying me. And I want to live the rest of my life for you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Listen, I'm so excited for you. If you decided to receive Jesus Christ in your life and you know that word was to you, I want you to just type there on the bottom. Just type it was me or you can even go to our website, info at thelightchurch.us. Send an email to us. Go to our website, thelightchurch.us, especially if you don't have a church home. Click on join. It's easy. You don't have to work hard. We're not going to have you walk in front of everybody and sit in the chair in front of everybody. And I don't, I, those of you who do that, that's great. I'm not going to have you do that. Those of you who want to be a part of our ministry, you, you want to be a part of our family, I just want to know I'm covering you. Do me a favor. You can go to any church, but I like to know I'm covering you. You ought to know who your pastor is. Everybody should know who their pastor is. If I'm your pastor and you know you're assigned to our ministry, do me a favor. Go to thelightchurch.us. Click on join. I want to call you. I want to see how you're doing. If I don't call you personally, somebody's going to reach out to you and connect with you. I want to thank those of you who help our ministry to continue to do what it does. Again, so many families were blessed on last weekend. It was amazing. Those of you who came to help us to, to, to share with the community, I, I, I can't thank you enough. And I want some of you to continue to give. Come on, this is the time where you can share with us. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. So many ways you can give. Those of you who are in Akron, look at me. Those of you who are in Akron are at GHTC, do me a favor and give right there. Give Lafay. Everybody give. When nobody sees you, yeah, God sees you. He knows. 
I don't want you to give out of condemnation. Come on, go back and listen to the message from last week. God blesses a cheerful giver, a grateful giver. If that's you and you want to sow a seed, whatever it is, some of you, watch this. I know I'm talking, I'm talking right to you. Some of you are backed up on your time. You say, I'm not going to give it. You know, I, I, I'm keeping it. I'm holding it. Do you know that you are holding yourself up? God wants to do something in you, in you, and he can't even do it because you are holding back what is his. Give it to him and watch God move in your life. I believe it. Come on, right now, give it a five. Those of you all over the nation, I want you to give. Delightchurch.us. And also, there's so many ways right there at the bottom of the screen. Give it. Those of you who are going to be a part of our family, come on, text to give right now. You only have to do it one time. Text give to that number on the screen. From then on, you can give whatever amount. Those of you who want to give by way of Cash App, so much has come in via Cash App. Thank you. I can hardly wait. I'm getting ready to share with the entire church what we did with the finances for the entire year. It's going to bless you. I can hardly wait to share. I'm getting ready to give a late state of the church. You're going to be blessed by this. I love you so much. I want those of you who are, who are watching us, join us on next week uh, on Wednesdays. We're going to be ministering uh, to married couples on Wednesday. All right. It's going to be awesome. I don't want you to miss it. Join in on Wednesday. It's going to be great. We're going to have a great time together. And uh, I, I'll see you next time for another edition of Life in the Light. God bless you, friends. 